In this video we are going to talk about this as the largest residence of any world leader. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. The current house of Indian President Ram Nath Kovind is the world's largest. The Iron Gates welcome guests to Rashtrapati Bhavan, a 330-acre presidential residence with hidden rooms, millions-dollar antiquities, and magnificent portraits, chandeliers, and furniture going back to 1912. The President's Palace is bordered by iconic Edwin Luchin structures including the Tuscan Pillars and Rampurva Bull. It also has a 4th-century Buddha statue and the famous Mughal Gardens with hundreds of flower varieties. The Viceroy's house was the presidential home. The Ashok and Banquet Halls still hold many old secrets. The Durbar Hall contains a two-ton chandelier and the State Library has 2,000 rare books. The Marble Hall Gift Museum houses thrones and presents donated to Indian presidents throughout history. Tennis courts and staff quarters are among the amenities. Are you ready to explore one of the world's most opulent homes? From the legendary Dwarka suite that has hosted many international leaders to the family wing in the northwest wing of the palace where the president lives, let's explore Rashtrapati Bhavan and discover its hidden features and magnificence. Design. It has four levels, 340 rooms, and a floor space of 200,000 square feet, 19,000 square meters. A powerful classical element was utilized to underline imperial power and authority throughout the Edwardian Baroque period. The mansion's design was long, complicated, and political. Luchin's early designs were all classical and European in style. They want me to do Hindu, Hindon I say, he spat at the local construction tradition, which he viewed as primitive. After significant political controversy, Luchin's consented to put local Indo-Saracenic elements on the building's skin, albeit superficially, to better integrate it into its political setting. The building included Indian elements. Indian design emphasizes water aspects, hence the several circular stone basins atop the edifice. A classic Indian chuja or chaja was also present, extending 8 feet meters, from the building and casting long shadows. It protects the windows from the sun and heavy rain during the monsoon season. Several chutras were placed along the roofline to help break up the flatness. Luchins used some Indian design elements, albeit sparingly and efficiently. A glass star rising from a metal lotus bloom crowns the column. Jalis, 10, were pierced red sandstone screens with Rajasthani designs. Twelve huge Ashokan columns with Delhi order capitals, a nonce order, Luchins created for this project, line the east side of the palace. Acanthus leaves encircle the four hanging Indian bells. The bells were inspired by a Jain temple in Mudabidri, Karnataka. Sight. Each corner of the column has a bell. Because bells in India are considered to signal the end of a dynasty, it was stated that silence meant British power would continue. The structure has no front windows save in the flanking wings. Unlike previous British examples of so-called Indo-Saracenic revival architecture, Luchins drew inspiration from much earlier Buddhist Mauryan art. The Delhi order and the main dome include embellishments evocative of early Buddhist stupas like Sanchi. Mughal and European colonial architecture can be seen. While the Secretariat building in New Delhi, designed by Herbert Baker, has similarities to other extant British colonial symbols, it is different. His personal modifications were a garden wall and two ventilation windows in the stateroom that resembled his glasses. The Viceregal Lodge, like the rest of New Delhi, was mostly built by 1929. It took 17 years to build, and 18 years for India to attain freedom. The ceremonial governor-general lived there until 1947, when India became a republic and the mansion was renamed, Rashtrapati Bhavan. It has 355 designed rooms and 200,000 square feet, 19,000 square meters. The building uses 700 million bricks and 3.5 million cubic feet, 85,000 cubic meters, of stone, with minimal steel. Created ateliers in Delhi and Lahore to work with local artisans. Its major engineer was Sir Tiha Singh Malik, and one of the primary contractors was Sir Soba Singh. Layout Plan the building's layout is centered on a vast square with various courtyards and open interior spaces. Two wings were planned, one for the viceroy and inhabitants and the other for visitors. The residence wing is a standalone four-story structure with its own court areas. Because this wing was so large, 
Chakravarti Rajagopalachari, the last Indian governor-general, chose to live in the smaller guest wing, as did subsequent presidents. The original house wing now serves as a guest wing for visiting heads of state and for official functions. Halls and Rooms Many of Rashtrapati Bhavan's halls are used for state functions. The most famous are Durbar and Ashoka halls. Submerged beneath the main building's double dome, known as the throne room, before independence, it housed the viceroy and viceroy's thrones. A solitary president's high chair sits beneath a 33-meter Belgian glass chandelier. The hall's flooring is chocolate-colored Italian marble. The Delhi order columns in Durbar Hall have vertical lines with a bell motif. No other Greek order of columns could have been used in the room's frieze. The columns are made of Jaisalmer marble and have a thick central line. Lord Mountbatten administered the oath of office to Jawaharlal Nehru as Prime Minister of Independent India on August 15, 1947, at 8.30 am the most beautiful of the halls, with a 3,220 m2 rectangular space. Originally, it was a wood-floored state ballroom. It represents King Fateh Ali Shah of Persia on a royal hunting journey. The walls are frescoed. The state drawing rooms, supper room, and library are located at Durbar Hall's four corners. Il Y and also loggias, galleries with open air on one side, a large dining hall, with 104-person table, sitting rooms, billiards rooms, and stairways. Dome. The center dome is a mix of Indian and British. A huge copper-faced dome dominates the center, atop a massive drum that stands out from the rest of the structure. The dome is exactly in the middle of the building's four diagonals. The dome is over twice as tall as the building. Lord Hardinge raised the dome's height in 1913. The dome is a mix of classical and Indian style. The design, according to Lutyens, was inspired by the Pantheon in Rome, despite the fact that the two share an oculus in the center. The dome's facade was influenced by early Buddhist stupas like Sanchi, which it resembles more in profile. The drum's lower dome contains a Buddhist, railing, design. The dome is supported by a porch with columns evenly spaced between them. The dome appears to float in the summer haze of New Delhi. Workers began building the outer dome's reinforced concrete shell in early 1929. The final dome stone was set on April 6, 1929. Mughal Gardens the Mughal Gardens, located behind the Rashtrapati Bhavan, mix Mughal and English gardening techniques. The Rashtrapati Bhavan Gardens are open to the public every February. Two parallel channels running in the cardinal directions divide the main garden into squares. Six 12-foot lotus-shaped fountains grace the canal's crossings, 3.7 meters. The channels produce reflective ponds. Wild birds can be fed grain on bird tables. Terrace Garden has two longitudinal strips of garden on each side of the main garden. The plants here are the same as in the main garden. Both strips have a fountain that falls into a well. Two gazebos stand at the western and eastern extremities, respectively. In the long garden, which lies west of the main garden, each side of the central walkway to the circular garden has a purta garden. It's basically a rose garden with 12-foot high walls. 16 square rose beds with low hedges. The middle pavement has a rose creeper, petria, bougainvillea, and vine-covered red sandstone pergola. Walls are covered in jasmine, rhynchospermum, tacoma grandiflora, bignonia venista, adenoclyma, achitis, and piranha paniculata. The china oranges line the walls. Mughal Gardens Tulips. Around the circular garden are a horticulturist's office, a greenhouse, stores, and a nursery. Here is one of the best bonsai collections in the country. The Mughal gardens have been preserved and maintained by all presidents who have lived at the Bhavan. Everyone has contributed in some way. The basic themes, however, remain unchanged. Museum. The then president of India, Pranab Mukherjee, opened a museum within Rashtrapati Bhavan in July 2014. The museum gives visitors an inside look at the Rashtrapati Bhavan, its art and architecture, as well as information on past presidents' lives. Restoration The first restoration effort of the Rashtrapati Bhavan began in 1985 and finished in 1989, during which architectural restorer Sunita Kohli removed the Ashoka Hall of its later modifications and restored it to its original state. Charles Correa and Sunita Kohli were involved in the second restoration project, which began in 2010. 
What do you think about our video? Please let us know in the comments area below. If you enjoyed this video and would want to hear from me again, please subscribe and turn on the notification before leaving. Thank you for watching us.